Hello everyone and welcome back to my podcast. This is Anne and today is December 17th, 2018. I hope everybody is doing well and you are enjoying uh, the holiday season here the last couple of weeks of 2018. Hard to believe that we're almost to the end of the year. Uh, this year has flown by. Um, this is a combined podcast that will have me talking about a whole bunch of crafty stuff, my knitting, my spinning, um, cross stitch, as well as books. Um, everything here is good. I'm going to just do a very quick life update because I have a ton of other things to talk about today. Um, but heading into the holiday season, uh, my husband will be home at the end of the week and he will be home for two weeks uh, through New Year's, which will be wonderful. This is this will be the longest he's been home since he went out on change of station. So it'll be really nice to have him here and we don't have a ton of big things planned. We're gonna kinda, well, we'll get the house decorated, finish decorating. I have some decorating done. You can see that here and stockings hung. There's one over outside the camera on that side. Um, don't have the tree up yet. I decided I did not want to drag all that up and down a flight of stairs um, by myself. So it'll be more fun to, you know, the night, uh, probably Saturday, we'll do that and have a nice dinner and, you know, just get to sit and enjoy it and have a fire going and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, everything here is good. And I hope that that is the case wherever you are in the world as well. I wanted to kind of jump right in um, because I do have so much stuff to talk about. So let's go right on to knitting. I have finished up the pair of socks that have been languishing since September. These are the Brego socks. I will put a link uh, to all the patterns and things I talk about uh, in the box below so you can find them. Um, Ravelry Download, Virginia Sattler Raymer, I think her name is, is the designer. I knit these from Cherry Tree Hills Super Sock Sock Weight Yarn. Uh, it's a Superwash Merino blend in the colorway Java. Uh, I knit the pattern as written. So just as an FYI, the legs are a little bit short and I was okay with that because I just really wanted to get these done. Um, I did make the Fish Lips Kiss Heel I input that as opposed to the flap heel that's written in the pattern, uh, just because I like that better. And I, I like these quite a bit. The pattern is a, it's just a knit pearl pattern, but it kind of gives the this sort of almost candy cane effect um, on these. So they're a fun textured pattern. I never did quite get the pattern memorized. I don't know why it, just could not stick in my brain, but I wound up reading the chart every single time I repeated it, which is not usually the case with me. But anyway, these are finally finished, and I think that they will likely go into the donation box for the um, I call orphanage for next year. At least that's the current plan. So um, be nice to have a pair already in my stack to send to them this time in another whole year. So that's that's them they are finished up um and got distracted because i'm sitting here looking out my back window and there's a really adorable cute little uh finch that has shown up and is looking back at me through the window i think the feeders are probably empty anyway um that was definitely like a little squirrel trail there uh, next year in the Willy Wonka Fibers group, I am hosting four quarterly knit-alongs and they are super casual and actually I guess we'd call them craft-alongs because you are welcome to knit or spin or crochet or weave or do anything that fits the themes. Um, you can go and take a look over at the Ravelry posts there. I have all four quarters uh, kind of outlined if you like to plan ahead. Um, if not, just so you know, the first quarter we are going to be working on projects that are literary themed. And I put together a bundle of patterns. There are oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of patterns out there that are themed on books. So characters in the books, um, place names, titles, authors, 
There's all kinds of stuff out there on Ravelry. Um, so I have a bundle that's, it's three pages long, but it's really just the tip of the iceberg for some suggestions. Um, and anything is fair game as long as you can tie it back to that quarterly theme. So I thought I would look at some of the things that were on my um, ever growing, ever expanding queue on Ravelry. Um, and one of the patterns I had wanted to do for quite a while is from the fall of 2012 Jane Austen Knits. And it's actually the Northanger Abbey Mittens. I'm just going to try to pull the picture up for you guys. Um, I wanted to do something that was fairly small. Of course, I should have marked the page, but did not. Um, something that would use up some stash and something that I could, you know, realistically get knit without having to... Um, knit yet another garment, which is basically all I've knit this past year. So it is these. They are got a nice long cuff and the originals were knit in um, Barocco Blackstone Tweed. Um, and I'm not gonna use that, although I do have some in stash because I think I have every yarn ever made in stash sometimes. Um, I'm actually going to be using this Coopworth hand spun. Um, that I think will work up just about right to the gauge and I may even have enough for two pairs like there's a fair amount I have all of that um, this has been in my hand spun stash like forever and ever and ever and ever and it needs to be used up um, so I thought it would be nice one of the things that the orphanage kids do because they get a lot of snow is they build snowmen and snow castles and snow things outside. And they like to have a set of larger mittens to put on over smaller mittens. So they have like double insulation. So when the outer ones get wet, um, the inner ones still stay dry. Cause apparently the kids like to, to make them out. They make the snow castles and then they put water on them so that they freeze solid and they stay the whole winter. Um, but they get very wet when they do that. So I thought, well, these are nice. They would either cover, you know, cover uh, sleeves of coats or be tucked up inside them. And then they could be big enough that the kids, the smaller kids could wear a second pair underneath. So I thought I would start with those because, you know, Jane Austen is one of my favorite literary things. And it's a pattern that I've had in my queue for a long time. I have yarn ready to go. So the plan for that is to cast those on probably New Year's Day for a New Year's start. And I'll see how far I go. Um, I've got some other like personal knitting plans I want to do. Um, if you've known me for a while, I'm constantly on the quest to decrease my stash yarn, which even though I don't really buy stash yarn, I don't knit my stash yarn up fast enough that it's going down very, very quickly. Um, I just do too much other knitting work with yarn that's not stash yarn. So that's always like a new year resolution for me. There will be a lot of new year's uh, 2019 plans and ponderings as we go through the video today. So um, there's just one of them. Uh, so that is my current uh, knitting information. If you are somebody who is in the uh, Celtic Year Shawl Club, just know that your packages are on their way. You will be getting an email um, I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this, so you may even already have it. Um, if not, it will come in the next day or so. Uh, that will have the pattern link and more information about the Yule time season and the celebration of the winter solstice uh, from that perspective. So that is en route. I will also have another pattern to release on the solstice on the 21st. Um, that I'm very excited about. It's a garment pattern, so look for that as well. And I will, uh, I don't really have any way to talk about it because um, I the sample has gone to my model. He loved it so much. That's what he took in payment for his photography time. Um, I think I will maybe talk about that more in the next video. So uh, we'll catch up with that then. Let's move on and we'll talk about spinning. I have kind of a finished spin to show you guys. 
Um, this is the first plied skein of the Isle of Skye Rolags that I was spinning from Blaine Fleece and Fiber. So um, I still have to finish up, this is maybe one third and this is about, I think it's 390 yards of a two ply. Um, it's sort of heavy fingering. So I have more singles left to spin and ply together, but this came off the first bobbin um, and is done. So I thought I would at least share that with you guys. I love how this came out. I think my favorite part is even though there is all of this emerald green and this rich kind of blue purple, there's these little tiny chestnut shots through it that kind of, I don't know, reminds me of a tartan, a tartan plaid. So uh, gorgeous sheen in this from the bamboo blend. It's got a combination of blue face luster wool, merino, and fin sheep wool plus the bamboo. So just gorgeous and I've really enjoyed spinning this up. So this is probably gonna be my final spin of the year. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm gonna get it all spun up and plied, but this will be all I get to in 2018. But I would like to finish all 12 ounces that I have so that I can um, look at a garment for next year. Um, I haven't decided yet for sure what I'm going to knit with it, but I'm thinking in terms of yardage, I'll have enough to do like a, a vest or a short sleeve or sleeveless type over top kind of thing. Um, but like I said, I haven't decided on a specific pattern for it, but love how this is turning out. And I think it's gonna be beautiful knit up and I could wear it over basically what I have on. So um, that is where I am for hand spinning. Um, I did wanna talk about a challenge slash prompt. Um, let's see if I get the number right. I think it's the 1763 Shepherdess. She is the person who uh, created the hashtag spin15 a day, um, which if you're on Instagram, you can follow. It's super fun. It is something that I try to do. I try to do like 15 minutes of spinning, 15 to 30 minutes of spinning every single day as part of my lunch break. And it makes a huge difference. You just chip away at stuff. Um, so she put together a challenge for 2019. Um, I will link to, I will put the hashtag link down below so you can find it on Instagram because that's kind of where she's generating it out of. Um, but it's another stash, stash down spin along and she put together 12 prompts. So what I decided to do for 2019 was to pull, um, each month has had a theme, um, and you don't really have to stick to them. The point of it is to try to spin 12 things you have in stash over the course of 2019. So that's one a month. Um, but I did go ahead and try to pull some things that matched um, the seasonal type prompts. So for instance, um, let's see here, get my list out real quick. Um, okay, so it's spin 15 a day stash down. That's the hashtag, hashtag spin 15 a day stash down. So the first prompt was winter wonderland. So for instance, I'm using, I'm gonna use this colorway, which is called ice lilac which I thought was pretty fitting. It's a funky Carolina roving in superwash merino and silk. Um, so I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna show you guys the 12 things that I've pulled. This is why this video is gonna be really long because there's me just showing you all kinds of this stuff. Um, February is um, here, have my heart. So I'm going with another funky Carolina colorway called My Grandmother's Heart. Really pretty pinks. This is just on merino wool. March is Luck of the Irish, and I am going to be doing, hang on. The Sargasso Sea on Falkland wool, because there's tons of green in that. 
Um, April is April showers, so I'm using Pigeon Roof Studios um, Storm Clouds colorway from her club, and this is on Superwash Merino. Then for May, the theme is, is Pretty Flowers, so I'm using Sorry, you guys. Uh, if you could see my dining room table, it's literally covered end to end with stuff. Um, this is from Three Waters Farm from their club last year, 2017, called Early Blooming. June is the theme, some, some, summertime. And I'm going to spin, I actually have two three ounce bags of a colorway from, um, Butterfly Girl, uh, they're bats, and it's called Sea Spray. So this will be a month that I have more than four ounces to spin because there's a total of three, 6.6 6 ounces. So that'll be for June. July is um, Christmas in July. And I'm gonna be spinning this merino roving from Ocean Wind Knits. Um, the title of which is uh, Sir Lancelot and Queen Guinevere. And I picked this A because it was the braid that came the previous July for Lori's Club. But I also thought this was actually kind of Christmassy colors, all of those rich reds and greens. So this is one that I had wanted to spin up and now have an excuse to do that. Um, Midsummer Night's Dream is for August and I'm gonna be spinning this big old bat. Uh, I don't really wanna take it out, but it's Hedgehog Fibers. You can see it's got a ton of sparkle in it and it's um, Polworth Wool, BFL, Silk, Merino, and Sparkle. It's 200 grams, so not quite eight ounces, but it'll be one of my other ones that I spin up that's more than an ounce, and I just, I love those colors. I've been, again, looking for an excuse to spin it, and there, there it is. Uh, September, I'm going to be, um, the prompt is uh, Harvest Moon, so I went with something that was sky-themed, called Cloud Atlas. This is from Two If By Hand on a Merino Cashmere Silk blend. And then um, autumn, uh, sorry, October is The Great Pumpkin. And I'm going to be spinning another Two If By Hand colorway called Sam's Autumn. This is BFL Blueface Luster and Silk. Love that. And then November is Home for the Holidays is the theme. And this is from Fat Cat Knits from her Mixed Blessings Fiber Club and it's called Early American, which I thought was, I don't know, kind of appropriate for the season. Um, Polworth Wool. So there's two colorways and I will, I don't know if, I, I've seen some of them spun together, which I really like, and I've seen them spun separately, which I also really like. So I'll make the decision when I get there. And then December, um, the very last thing is Ho 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 is the theme. And I'm gonna spin this colorway, which I think also is very Christmassy, even though it's called Cisco, which isn't necessarily Christmas themed. Um, but again, I have six ounces of this and I thought um, it'd be good to just try to get through a little bit more than just a four ounce braid. So, so those are my plans for spinning for next year. You guys kind of got that as a little bonus. Um, again, I will put the hashtag to that uh, link um, as well as to the 1763 Shepherdess's Instagram account so that you can find those if you're interested in spinning along with us. Um, 
Okay, let me put some stuff in that bin because otherwise, if I don't, I will not have enough space to continue talking. Uh, let's see. Okay. Ooh, uh, let's talk about books. Um, I have several books that I've finished up in the last couple of weeks. I've been on a reading kick. Um, the first one I had just started last time I talked to you guys. It's called Da Vinci's Ghost by Toby Lester. Genius Obsession and How Leonardo Created the World in His Own Image. Um, nonfiction. The book is mostly about Vitruvian Man, who is this figure that fits in a circle as well as in a square that is sort of attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. Um, but the book talks about how this concept of man fitting into this larger organic picture of the world, um, how long it had existed before Leonardo's time, but what da Vinci did that made it so um, recognizable, if you will. Um, I wish that this book had talked a little bit more about Da Vinci's notebooks and his thought process. Um, it was a little bit back of a galloping horse for me. Um, it does talk a little bit about his early, early life and how he was apprenticed and how he sort of approached looking at the world. Um, and it talks about the fact that he kept notebooks. And there's one quote in here that I found very interesting. Um, it says, Leonardo didn't just model his notebooks on the sketchbooks of artists and, artists and engineers, although he did do that. There were tons and tons of drawings that he made about architecture and all of the military machinery that he was interested in and crossbows and um, anatomy and all kinds of, I mean, he was definitely somebody who was interested in a lot of things. But it said he also turned to another source for inspiration, the commonplace book designed to preserve not pictures, but words. So it talks about the fact that during the 15th century and certainly at other times in history, um, you know, the way that learning was passed down was you would have one copy of a book somewhere um, kept in a private library, kept in a monastery. And you would, as you learn to read and study, you would take down passages from that book into your commonplace book, um, kind of like we do with today's journals. And that was one of the interesting tie-ins to this that I, I found very interesting in terms of how Leonardo uh, approached collect, the collection of knowledge. Um, and so you would write down maybe a paragraph that applied to something that you were going to think more about or do more research on. Um, a lot of what Leonardo's notebooks are, were, um, are lists of things that he wanted to learn more about. And that part of this story, I think, is more interesting than the presentation of just Vitruvian Man. And I know Leonardo was interested in so many different things that you could write as many books about that as he had notebooks. Um, so the concepts in this were very interesting and the fact that the author took this back um, several centuries into the monastic and um, early Christian traditions um, about how people were looking at the world through the filter of their current experience that they were pulling information in from even earlier time periods with the Greeks and the Romans um, and kind of how knowledge was furthered through the medieval period and into the Renaissance. I get it. Um, this all ties into this concept of man being at the center of the universe and that he was recreated as um, in the image of God or gods, depending on which period of history you were looking at, um, and how that translated down into art and into architecture and then into the written word. Um, 
I think if you do not have at least some basic history classes at the college level, this book is not really going to be interesting to you because there's tons of references to things that the author assumes that you've read in some classic history type classes or at least on your own. Um, and without that background, I'm not sure this book is of much interest, but it was good. I would give it three and a half stars. I found myself skimming through some of it. And like I said, I, I wish that he had tied in maybe some more personal information about Da Vinci that he gleaned from his notebooks, from Da Vinci's notebooks. Um, so there is that one. Um, I then read a book, um, which I downloaded on Kindle called Edinburgh, Edinburgh Twilight. This is the first in a new mystery series. I believe the next one just came out. Uh, it's set in the 1880s and is focused on, I guess, Edinburgh. Um, a little bit slow to start, but once I got into it, it was a great read and then I couldn't put it down and it's basically, I just read through it like no, no stopping. That was what I did for every single break, you know, um, quick coffee break and I'd read a chapter or something like that during the day. Um, fun characters, um, well-developed, uh, place. Uh, I was really excited to read this book because it kicks off at, um, Arthur's seat. Um, that's kind of the opening scene in the midst of this gloomy rainstorm, you know, as twilight is falling and it really sets the stage for all the creepy things that, that go on throughout the mystery. Um, I thought the author did a good job with the plot. There was a couple of places where it was a little slow at the beginning, just getting into it. But once I got there, two thumbs up, then it was, yeah, it was a very good read. So link to that below. Uh, then I zipped through a book called Peacock and Vine. Um, this is another nonfiction book. And I think I would call it more of an essay than an actual book book. Um, it's fairly short. It's like 120 pages. Um, and there's full page pictures in it. Uh, but it is comparing, um, William Morris and Mario Fortuny. And they were both artists in their own way. Um, I thought it was a very interesting, um, approach to it because the author talks about the fact that she felt that both Morris and Fortuny were influenced by the way light hits objects. And if you kind of back up and you you take um, out of the picture kind of the types of art that they did, then you can, you know, read her explanations with an open mind and you really kind of do see how their visions of the world influenced kind of what we've come to associate as their style. Um, and one of the things that I didn't know about Fortuny is that he originally was a painter and thought of himself as a painter. He didn't think of himself as a dress designer. He got very involved with uh, designing through working with um, Wagner's operas and kind of that whole um, Nordic aesthetic, even though he was based in Venice. Um, and I'm a huge fan of William Morris. I love all of his, like his woodcut type lithographs, um, all of the fabrics that he later produced, um, his concept about how, you know, art should be, uh, something incorporated into your everyday life and things that you have around you should be useful and beautiful. Um, and I have had the privilege, I guess I would call it, um, one of the museums that I worked in long ago actually owned two original Fortuny dresses. They still had the original, um, like hat box shape cases, um, and the silks were amazing. And the combination of the colors of the silk and the beads, um, they were just mind boggling. Um, you know, it was like a special treat to get to open those boxes and see those two garments. They just, like if you haven't seen them in person, they're, they're like watching water. 
move through a stream. They're, they're just amazing. Um, so it, the book t essay, let's call it the essay, the essay talks about the similarities between the two men and their differences um, and kind of sums up at the end the fact that there are certain things that both of them, that appeared in the symbols that both of them used, things like the pomegranate, um, both Morris and Fortuny used the symbol of the pomegranate um, and kind of all of its cultural references from um, ancient times up through the late 19th century, um, as well as color palettes and the way that they approached their work, um, that both of them were not totally unlike da Vinci, were um, artists who were also very hard workers. They spent a lot of time perfecting their craft, um, learning new techniques, um, reviving older techniques, um, figuring out ways to patent new uh, concepts, new ways to do things, um, the sort of mechanization of artistry. Um, so a great little book, I thought, um, definitely thought provoking, uh, interesting. If you are interested either in Morris or in Fortuny, um, obviously in 120 pages, you're not getting a ton of information about their lives, um, except as how it relates to how they produced their products and their art and the things that inspired both of them. So link to that below. Finally, I have picked up this book, which has been on my bedside table for months, which my dad sent me, The Winter Sea by Susanna Kearsley. This is another book set in Scotland. I'm getting myself prepped for possibly two Scotland tours next year. I'm just going to toss that in. Um, I have read one other book by her. I think it's called The Wild Horses, uh, maybe. But anyway, I will link to this on Goodreads. You can find her profile. These are historical fiction with some element of sort of magic in them. Uh, this one is, like her other ones, it has a contemporary thread storyline through it and then the historical storyline through it. Um, set in 1708 at the Scotland coast um, on the eve of one of the Jacobite uh, rebellions. Um, the main character in the contemporary story is an author who's trying to tell this historical fiction tale and she's decided that she's going to use uh, one of her ancestors as uh, the main character in it, this woman named Sophia. And she's rented a cottage on the coast near Slains, this castle that's uh, featured in the book and featured in this historical event that actually happened. And she's realizing that her life in the contemporary and her ancestor's life in the early 1700s are becoming kind of entwined. Uh, so if you've read anything else by her, I, this is in a similar vein. Um, you know, they're fun, they're escapist literature, um, a thick one that I'm hoping will take me pretty close to the end of the year and then I can kick off my 2019 plans uh, right around the turn of, of the calendar. Um, and I, I'm, but I'm already a third of the way through it, so we'll see how long that lasts. It's a quick and easy read. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about it when I'm finished it, but that is what is um, currently being read. And just a footnote, if you um, only look, you know, find my videos through one of the links that I set up like on Ravelry and you are interested in the books I'm reading next year, I have a whole section on those. Um, that's a separate video that I did not link to my Ravelry group. Um, that's just book topics and it will appear before this one. Uh, in my video list. If you're somebody who just subscribes to me, you've already seen the link. So if you're interested, you can check that out. And if you're not, you don't have to. All right, we're gonna move on to cross stitch now because I have a lot to talk about there. All right, um, let's talk about first what I have 
work done and done. Um, first up, I have an FFO. I finally finished up this cute little best friend Santa from Mill Hill. Um, just used felt backing and put a little green ribbon on it. But once we have the tree up, this will be on that this year. So very happy to have that done. Um, then let's see, I worked on three things so far this month since I've last talked to you. Let's go with the Celtic wheel first. This is from the Bewitched Cross Stitch book by Joan Elliott. It is shown here as a cushion. It has all of the eight Celtic festivals, sorry for the glare, on it. And I am working this on a uh, 28 count Lugana in the colorway Sampler Gold. This, um, it's a color and cotton uh, fabric. And here is where I am on it. So I finished the border out here and turned the corner. This is just about ready to turn the corner, I believe, uh, maybe to there. Um, and I started, I just had this half finished of this center motif. So I started and worked that way a bit. And then I came back and I finished the thistle um, and did the back stitching for that. And I started back stitching in here. Some of it you can't really even see because it's black on black, but uh, that's how far I got on that. Really happy with this. Um, I love the I love the hand dyed fabric. I think it's gonna look like it's on parchment when I'm done, which is what I was going for. So yeah, so good progress on that. That made me very happy. Um, that will come out whenever it comes out again. Um, okay, then I started um, a new project. This is a long winter's nap. It's the ornament version, so it's in the circular um, orientation. Artwork by Donna G uh, Gelsinger and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I started this. Um, this is on a 32 count um, magic guide fabric. And I got the very top of the curve of this done, plus this little extra bit, which is kind of right in the center. So it's this curve right here, and it's this little angel ornament that you see right there is what has been started. Crazy, crazy amounts of confetti on this side, as you can see. Um, I think when I tackle this next, and it will be out again um, for the first week of January for the Full Coverage Fanatics, the cozy uh, prompt in the stitch along over there. Um, I'm gonna start this side and work back that way and try to just work down as I go. So not a whole lot to see, but it is started. And so that one will be out again um, in January. Okay, and then I worked on one other thing so far this month. Um, I'm still trying to stick to my five day rotation where I work on something for five days. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about the plans going forward once we get there, so hang tight. Um, then I pulled out, um, let's see if I can find the picture, not that you guys probably even need to see it, but it's um, The Stargazer by Marabilia. And I worked on this um, kind of the middle of the month for Lorna the Ladybird Stitcher's birthday sal. Um, I am stitching this on 28 count Lugana from Picture This Plus in the colorway Phantom. And here is where we are with her. Um, if you follow me on 
Instagram, you know that I had stitched the hair. I wanted to convert it to blonde-er. And I had gone with like this color, uh, i.e. not very much color anymore, kind of more platinum-y. And I was concerned that it was gonna look odd up next to her face. And so I wound up, I posted a, a picture and had some really great feedback on that. And so I opted to rip what I had done and I'm stitching, I basically went like one color darker in everything. So that's what I'm currently working on. Next time she comes out, I'm gonna try to get the face finished, which I'm doing over one. I need to finish up a little bit. There's missing stitches on the hands. Um, and then work down. And sh this one will be out again um, in the upcoming month. And I will be talking about that shortly. Um, okay, so that's what I have worked on so far this month. Um, currently on my stand is this project for Christmas time called 12 Days. It's a Jim Shore pattern, uh, Jim Shore artwork. Uh, it came as a kit from Design Works. I have swapped out the fabric. The original was an Ada, and I had decided A, it was a little stiff for my tastes, and B, I didn't want it to be quite this big. So what I did is I dropped down to a 22 count hard hanger, and so I'm actually stitching this now one over one on that. This is another picture of this plus fabric um, in Legacy. And this is where I am. So I will be working on this. Today is Tuesday. I will be working on this through Thursday of this week. And I would like to finish up this block right here. So finish up the blue, get the staff back stitched, and then bring the back stitching can see on the purple, I've done it to here. So bring the back stitching down on each side to as far as I've done the, the border and then continue working on his face, whatever I have time for. I wanna try to get this done, you know, so as I move down, I can scroll up and this will all be completed and I won't have to go back in and do back stitching. It's got a lot of back stitching and I like to do that as I go if I can. So you can see right now, I've got the hat is started and this still needs the back stitching. Um, Dina over at Half Stitch Cross Stitch is working on her version of this, um, but I think she started in the middle. I'm pretty sure she has done the, the birds like right in this section, but I, had to, I started at the top because I wanted to make sure how it was gonna fit on the fabric. So this is gonna be much smaller. Um, I think it's like nine by, just about nine by 12 as opposed to 14 by 16. And I thought that would be easier to frame and have out as a holiday piece. So that is what I will be working on the next couple of days. And so I'll show you how far I get on that next time I record. All right, I'm gonna jump and do just a little bit of haul and then I'm gonna talk about my plans. Um, I don't have a ton of haul, it's all color and cotton stuff. Um, the first is the December, nope, November, um, Fabric of the Month Club, a 28 count Jobelin. This is in the colorway Barnwood. Just a nice neutral that I'm sure I will use for lots of could use for lots of things. So that came um, actually, I think like the day after I filmed last time. But there is that. And then I also got um, the limited edition um, country, country Christmas. Is that what we're calling it? Wait, Merry Cozy Christmas. So that arrived yesterday and I thought I would just show you, kind of do a quick unboxing of that for you guys. Um, it's a great box. I am really sad that I missed the Halloween one. I'm super glad I caught the Christmas one because going forward, whatever Angela does, I'll just sign up for it. That's, that'll be easy. Uh, came with this cute little gingerbread man ornament. That'll go on my tree. 
a package of hot cocoa. That sounds perfect for one cold afternoon. Um, she also included a little gift voucher, which I'll not show you because it's got a discount code on it. Um, an adorable needle minder. Um, hand dyed brick rack trim, green and red. Um, an original design that she did, that Angela did, that can be stitched with other stuff in the box. So how cute is that? Um, came with two hand dyed limited edition silks, um, green. There's no color names on these, they're just, just say limited edition. So the green and then the red. So beautiful. Then it also came with a whole bunch of hand dyed cotton flosses. There's reindeer treats, hot chocolate. That's pretty variegated. Holly berry. Rudolph's nose. That's fun. Laurel, Christmas tree, frosted spruce, which I think is my favorite out of the group. It's like an herb, like an artemisia green, like gray tones in it. Um, to all a good night, eggnog. and Christmas gold. So all of those, um, she sent a cute little pack with lots of little buttons in it. And then this one has little rusted jingle bells in it. Again, that you can attach to ornaments. It also came with several backing fabrics. So this cute red and white, or red and white, Red and natural colored checked gingham. This hand dyed green cotton. It's got just a little bit of marbling. It's not like crazy, but you can see it's, yeah, I mean, it's just perfect, really. And then this really gorgeous piece of hand dyed velveteen that's in that kind of, um, same herby green. How gorgeous is that? And then um, it also came with two limited edition colorways. Um, I opted for the linen. So this is 32 count Belfast. Um, again, no colorway name, just limited edition. And um, a second one that's a slightly larger piece, but also 32 count Belfast. It's just a nice, you know, neutral kind of homespun look to it. So I already know that I'm going to be utilizing a lot of these um, in projects for 2019. Um, and I'm going to talk about that here. Let me just tuck these back in the box so I don't lose anything onto the floor. Okay. Running out of room here, guys. I'm on the table. Lizzie, can you go lie down, please? Down. Help her dog's getting rested because 45 minutes in and I'm still talking at the screen. Okay. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you know that I have had a lot of new starts. Um, I came to the conclusion when I looked through my plans and things for 2019 that one of the things that was making me have a little bit of anxiousness uh, was the fact that in committing to do no new starts in 2019, everything I had was monster big projects. You know, you've seen what I've been working on just in the last four weeks. That's basically the size of everything I have. I have a couple of sort of medium-ish projects that were the Prairie Schooler ones. Um, but I mean, I have a lot of Hades on the go. I have this big Mirabilia on the go. Um, there really was not very much that was small. 
and I thought, you know what, if I slog through next year where I am working focusedly on pro big projects and I have no finishes, I'm going to be completely demoralized by March. That's just, I mean, that's just how it felt. And I didn't want to go into it feeling uh, like I wasn't going to get anything accomplished next year. I like to have finishes. I like to feel like I'm getting some stuff done. I also looked at my travel schedule and I think I mentioned this before, I already have six, seven out trips that are at least four days and some are longer than that every single month from January through the end of May. And I have another, I have another two probably eight day trips that are going to happen in October and December plus two or three other trips, one in August, um, one in October, one in November. So there's like two months next year that I potentially don't have any travel. I'm not taking, I'm not taking a full coverage piece on travel. I have a limit to my level of craziness. That is apparently my line in the sand. So I went through my stash and I decided that I was going to pull some new starts, which I did. Um, I've kind of made some decisions about some other things to put into the mix for next year. I'm going to show you what I've started. So hang in there. If you need to take a break, go get a cup of coffee or come back, whatever, because I'm going to be here a little, little while longer. Um, the sum total of this is currently I have 40 active projects, or I will by the end of this month. I'm going to have one caveat for my no, no New Starts 2019 because the timing didn't quite work the way I wanted to on one. And I have one project that is going to go into timeout for the foreseeable future until I decide what I want to do with it. So let's start with the things you know. Um, I already have, I had several larger projects on the go for next year. My current plan in terms of how I'm gonna deal with rotation and how I'm gonna deal with projects is for every single month, I'm going to be working one week or one five day period on whatever the prompt is for full coverage fanatics for that group. So for instance, in January, it's cozy and I'm going to work for a week on a long winter's nap because that is one cozy cat. Um, so that is gonna be, that'll be a different full coverage project every single month throughout the course of 2019. There will be two five-day blocks where I'm going to work on Winter's Encounter, which is my another Hade. Um, it's the one of the windswept horse with the little chickadee. That'll be out fairly early in January, so you guys will see that one. I also have decided after I watched um, Jesse Marie's last video, hey Jess, um, that I'm going to commit to trying to get Stargazer finished. Now she's big, she's big. And you know, there's still a lot of stitching to happen here because this whole dress plus the beads, you know. However, I have been pleasantly surprised with how much I have gotten done on the five days that I've worked on her when I've worked on her this year. And I feel like if I work on that for five days every single month, until she's done, I can have her done in 2019. And I think, I think Jess has got her on tap as well. So um, we'll have like a little maybe informal stitch along thing. Um, none of those will be projects that I take with me when I travel. That basically leaves me 10 days every single month to work on something else. And I'm hoping then I can slot things in where I can take a smaller project with me when I do travel to work without feeling so overwhelmed. Um, the outlier projects that you guys haven't seen kind of over the course of this year or that I'm going to be dealing with differently for next year, for 2019, um, I have decided to put uh, the project called Shoot the Moon. It is, um, it is a Hade design, but it is no background. and. It's all stitched in 310. It's a silhouette type piece. Uh, I had it out earlier this year. I think it was April or maybe May. 
And I've come to the conclusion that this is like the one piece that when I think about what I want to work on, I always think, oh, I don't want to work on that, which is probably telling me something. Um, and so since I can make whatever rules I want, I'm going to put that one in timeout for the foreseeable future. I am not including it in my current active 40 whips. And if I feel like picking it back up at some later date, I can do that. If I feel like not picking it back up, I can do that too. Um, I will let you guys know <laughs> if and when I decide to do something different with that. Um, the one thing that I have kind of replaced into my project list is this piece, which you guys have not seen in quite a while, I think almost a year. Um, this is a kit that I got for Christmas last year. Um, it is done using the Bayou stitch, so it's not technically cross stitch. Um, it is worked in wools on a fine count linen. Let me try to get it open and show you what I have done. Um, and I just, I really would like to make some progress on it and I feel like if I just put it in the rotation, then I can actually at some point focus on it. This is all I have done. Um, this cuff is completely finished. Um, this set section right here is done except for the back stitching of kind of where the folds are. And then I have started on this section which needs to be couched. Um, it, I don't have any expectation that I necessarily would finish it, but I would like to, you know, put some time in on it. And when it comes up as like a randomly selected option, it will go into the rotation. Um, so my plan is for the extra 10 days a month, I will have those two five day slots. I will use my tiny decisions app and let it pick whatever I'm going to work on for that period of time. Um, the only caveat to that is, is if it picks a full coverage piece and it is a week I'm traveling, I will opt to like, make another selection and switch those so that the week I'm traveling is a week I have a smaller project. Make sense? Sort of, kind of? All right, you guys want to see the new starts? There's a bunch, so uh, let's just, we'll just, we'll just get started. Um... I, there will be a fair amount of crinkling because there's packaging and you will also recognize that there's a fair amount of Brenda Gervais projects. April, April word play. Um, my plan is to do all of these this year or I've started all of these this year. Um, part of what the impetus for all of this was is that I realized that I absolutely love having out seasonal pieces on the sideboard that's out in the other room. And I have a decent number for the fall, but almost nothing for many of the other seasons. And I have the word plays done for January, February, and oddly enough, October, just that was what I started. Um, and I really wanna have some of these as well as some other smalls out. I have my pretty glass bowl, that I have out there. Um, I have like space to put stuff and have more seasonal decorations. And I just love looking at them. It makes me happy every time I walk past that. And I mean, who doesn't need a little more happy in their life? I know, I do. Everyone does, I think. Um, and it's like, it's a little thing, you know? It's not like, oh, I've redecorated my entire living room. It's just this one area and it just, it just makes me smile every time I walk in and out of there, which is usually a couple times a day. So most of these are gonna be things that would fit into that category that are things I can fit in that space. So April wordplay. Um, my plan is to do almost all of my new starts with color and cotton floss. I have some gentle arts that I'll mix in, but for the most part, it's gonna be my color and cotton um, thread club a stash that I have collected. So I have started this one. This is on a 22 count Ariosa and again color and cotton threads here. Um, I basically opted to just do one thread worth and when I ran out then I was done. 
So that's where I am with this. The colorway on this fabric is, hang on one second, antiqued. So that is started. Let me put these away as I go since I've got quite a few. And just check my time. And they have to pop off and come back in because I have a call. Um, next up, this is the um, Christmas Morning Pets, which I have wanted to do for a while. It is a gold collection petites. Um, I'm just doing this on the, it came as a kit, and I am just doing this on the super stiff, um, I think it's 14 count Ada, 16 count Ada, anyway, there's my little start, it's the cat, beginning of the cat. Next, um, I have started on a little skinny piece. The Drawn Threads Welcome Winter. Love this one. Have the autumn one that I finished this year. Um, and I'm stitching this on this um, icy blue linen. It's the same that is what I used to do that. So I have a nice long piece of it, but it's skinny. But since I'm finishing it into a cushion, it doesn't matter. You'll see I've got a lot of sort of smaller little scrap um, pieces. And that's as far as I've gotten on that. Uh, let's see. These are in no particular order. They are just as I got them done. Uh, the next is a shepherd's bush pattern called Summer. Um... It's pretty, it's a pretty tiny little guy. I do have all the buttons that go with it that are here in the sample. And I am stitching this on a 32 count Weeks Dye Works linen in the colorway Morris Blue. And I have started there with the little flowers, except I think it goes that way. Yep. So I have started that one. More wordplay. This is the November wordplay. And I am stitching this one on a 28 count natural linen. I think this is a Zweigart, no, Wichelt linen. So it's super stiff, but I've got that started. And then because this piece was big enough, it was long enough, I have also started the Drawn Threads Welcome Summer on it. And I was really, really happy to find, I have, um, this is technically um, NP, no, Dinky Dye, it's a Dinky Dye Silk, but this color in cotton blue almost perfectly matches. And there's what I've gotten done. Okay, moving on. I know we're going through these kind of quick guys, but at an hour I figure, how much more time do you really want to spend listening to me yak, yak on here? Uh, the August word play. Um, I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count uh, I believe it's earthen, picture this plus. So I've started that. Next is the drawn thread, um, Welcome Spring. And I am doing this on a piece of 28 count Monaco. So I started in the middle on that one, like that big C. Um, I started a cute little one from Annie B's called Pins and Needles. It's a little pin keep. 
sampler pinky. And I don't know for sure. I think this is this. I think this is an R and R Reproductions. It's something I got as a sample um, through Stitchy Box last year. So I started there on that one in the center. Uh, next up, in honor of the Scotland trips, I started my Celtic Santa Scotland Santa. And here is where I am on that one. I just started, it's his hat and a little bit of the like wrap, the tartan wrap that he's got. Um, enabled by Jessie Marie, who is, has been working on her version of this. Uh, recently is the Summer Sampler from Cooler Classic Charts. This is one of four seasonal ones. I have all four of them. I was initially going to work this on a 22 count because I wanted it smaller than what it calls for because um, I want to also make these as like little cushions to have out. Um, but I had it a, a 22 count hard hanger and there's a lot of quarter stitches in this and it was going to be kind of a pain in the neck to do so I opted to move it to a 40 count um, linen uh, where I'm doing it over two so it'll come out like it's on 20 count and I have started that little seashell which you basically can't see at all but it's right there. I know, impressive, impressive. All right, so Jess, you'll have to let me know when you get yours out in 2019. I will try to work on that when you work on yours. Another little stitch along. Okay, uh, two more. These are both um, word plays. The first is March. And I am working this on 28 count doubloon. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten. I'm doing these both on one um, piece of fabric, so they're kind of over next to the edge. The other one is the September wordplay. And here's where this one is. This is actually a Gentle Arts, it's Wood Trail, which I love the variegation in that. Okay, so those are started. Next up, um, let's see what I've got. Oh, here's the December. December word play, which I'm doing on 32 count Valor from Picture This Plus. I think he goes that way. It's the beginning of the Santa coat, which I know I know you can tell from this. But love how that looks on this fabric. And then uh, for the June word play. I am working this on um, is it 28 or 32 count? 28 count Brittany. Um, this is from Jodry Designs. It's called Winter Frost. So I started that. Then, this is the May wordplay. Told you there were a lot of these. This is on, I think, the other 
piece of earthen that I have, and this is where I've gotten to on that. Also a 32 count, uh, 28 count linen on that one. Uh, July wordplay. This is on a 22 count Ariosa in the colorway Buttercream. And I have started on the waves in the center where the ship is. I also decided, um, because I love this, this is the Winter Garden from Drawn Thread that I finished this year. Um, I actually have all four of them. I was really tempted to start all, the, well, the other three of them. I did not, but I am starting the Summer Garden. Um, which I am working on a piece of Wichilt linen that I had in stash, so it is a little crispy. But it is 32 count and it is in the colorway French Lace, which I love because it's kind of not quite gray, not quite beige. I love it. I love how the house is coming out on it. I'm doing this in the same one over two that I did this one in because I like the kind of, I don't know, almost misty antique look to it. Um, so have started that one. Um, guys, I'm going to take a little break. In your time, I will be right back. Um, in my time, i got to go deal with a business phone call, but I will finish this up and combine the two. So hold that thought. I will be right back with you. <laughs> 